I think Style 3D has, bar none, the best avatars available in the fashion-oriented um, 3D modeling software packages. They've got some really, really great female avatars. The men, you've got not quite as much choice in the women. So fortunately, there's a solution out there if you want to get a little creative. Uh, while Style 3D lets you modify a lot of the parameters of the avatars, there's a great free solution out there called Daz 3D. So if you go to daz3d.com, the website, they've got... Um, and it's maybe slightly confusing because they've got a whole bunch of different things you need to download. They've got Daz 3D Studio, they've got Daz Central and Daz Install Manager, and it's all these little components that you need, but they're free. And it comes with a lot of standard stuff, which is free. And then if you want, you can purchase little upgrade packages um, for more details. They're rather inexpensive and they're always going on sale. So I'd say it's sort of like shopping at Macy's. Don't pay full price. Wait till stuff goes on sale because they're on sale all the time. So anyways, that's 3D. Let's see how it works. So I'm going to start by bringing in a character. Um, this is one that I had purchased and we're going to we're going to change some of the details on him. Um, He's a little emaciated, and since I do a lot of um, very superhero-inspired stuff, he needs a little bit more muscle on him. And again, while Daz has a lot of built-in uh, shaping functions, there are um, some plugins you can purchase, and one of them that I purchased is just for shaping musculature. So we'll go over to this pane, and... This one you're going to pay attention a little bit to because depending on where you've clicked up here, some stuff may or may not be visible. It takes a while to get used to. Um, so right now we're going to look at the shaping tab because I want to shape him a little bit. And again, so we see Novak here, but there's a tree of stuff. And depending on if you've clicked on something different, see, there's a bunch of stuff that may or may not be available depending on what you've clicked up in here. So if you're looking for something here and you don't see it, go back and click on the main panel. So I'm going to leave his face alone. I'm just going to add some musculature because it's really going to illustrate um, a point that I want to make to you. So let's first look at his arms and we'll give him a little bit of biceps tone. Uh, these are, again, these are some some upgrade morphs that I had purchased. Then the deltoid, we don't need, well, we want the middle because that is going to punch up his shoulders a little bit, not too much. And then let's leave that. Let's go play with the chest a little bit. We'll uh, give him some, oh, no, we want both. There we go. Not too much. Um, clavicular, mm, that's too much. Yeah, and then we'll go over to the abs. That really shows some of the, the, the differences and highlights. Um, yeah, let's really crank that. Let's make it silly. That'll, that'll make it obvious. So when you're exporting a figure, it's more common to use FBX format because FBX carries a whole lot more data than OBJ. But we're going to explore that right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export him as OBJ and export him in FBX, and we'll look at the differences between them. Don't really need to name it like that. Um, <laughs> so that's a little... So these are the default options for the OBJ. I just want you to observe a couple things that... The, um, where are the units? Up, oh, scale 100%, custom, convert from Daz Studio. See, we can't set units to millimeters anywhere. And most software, like Style 3D and Clo and others, they work in millimeters. We just have to be conscious of the fact that, and where does it say in here? I don't see it. Um, well, know that does works in centimeters so these are the default options for obj i'll accept and it's a very quick save let's now save it as fbx which would be more common 
and change this to FBX. So if I had shoes on him or clothes, I might want to gather them up and merge. So you can merge clothing into figure skeleton. Um, that can sometimes cause problems. Like socks and underwear sometimes cause collision problems when you're working in other problems. So I usually let them out. I know some people will clutch their pearls going, ah, he's naked, but trust me, it's better. So let's save this out as an FBX. And you notice something just happened there. A morph twitched. It's like there was a glitch in the matrix. Um, let's go have a look in Style 3D. So first I'm going to import OBJ. And so there's my Novak OBJ and open. We haven't got anything else open or started, so we can leave it as open, load as avatar, scale. It's recognized that it's set to centimeters. If it wasn't, if it was at millimeters default, you'd want to change it to centimeters. And hit OK. It comes in. And it looks funny. He's all white, and he looks like he's wearing really bad false eyelashes. So let's just move him out of the way. And now we'll import the FBX. So this time we don't want to open, we want to add Lotus Avatar. And well, let's not do auto scale. We know it's centimeters, so we'll do that and bring him in. And well, so he comes in with textures and things, but there's still a few things that need addressing. But one thing you notice, like if you look at his abs, there's far less detail, there was a lot less soft. I mean, in general, the body is not looking the same. And then when we look at the face, I mean, look at the shape of his cheekbones compared to the FBX, shape of his chin and the cleft, we don't see that in the FBX. The mouth is far more defined. Um, definitely in the OBJ, it's looking better. But the OBJ, there's no textures, and the eyelashes are weird. The eyes are weird on the FBX too, because there's a few things that we have to do. So whether we use OBG or FBX, we've got to remap. Oh, there's something strange going on here. So we'll click on, and there's different parts of the eye. So we'll click on there, and this is called eye moisture and there's no texture. So when you export the FBX from DAS, it creates a folder that has the texture files in it. So we're gonna go look for that. So see, there's a file called novakfbx.images. So we've got a, a file called eyes. Now it's got all of them, and we'll look at that in a second. And notice it's changed. And then I'll click here. And again, we don't have a texture. I want to go get the eyes and just keep working around because there's different parts of the eye and eye moisture and things. See here, we've got eye moisture and it's got this weird little eyelashes, which is why we've got like the shape of eyelashes on his eye. That's, that's wrong. I don't know where it does it. Daz is weird sometimes. So I'm just going to delete that. And instead go grab the eyes texture again. Now leave some of these white. It should be fine because we're going to change the materials later. But right now I just want to talk about textures. So you'll notice that the OBJ has no textures whatsoever. And there is a way to change that by changing one of the default export options later. But because we have the textures in that folder that was created for the FBX, we can borrow them for him. So let's start with his face. So we'll go get the face texture. And right now we're just talking textures, not materials. And that's important. I'll go get his neck, which is on his torso. And then the ears would be probably the face. Yep, see there's the ears. The lips will come from the face. Now we gotta be careful to work around the eye properly. I'm waster. Eyes. And we're not seeing them because the eyes are kind of special. And we'll talk about that when we talk about materials.
and just working over all the areas of the eyes. So the eyelashes are weird. Why? They're just big blocks of black. So it's got this dark color. The thing is we don't really see the eyelashes. So we have to change something. Alpha, transparent map. So sometimes rather than creating a whole bunch of geometry, like if we wanted really just those little strands of eyelashes, that would be really complicated geography, geometry. So instead we've got this big block of black, but we wanna change it so that we only see the eyelashes. So we're gonna make a, a transparent map. In fact, they have made one for us, but we'll add it. So you see this file right here. When we talk about alpha maps and transparent maps and uh, displacement maps, Anything that's black is not visible, and anything that's white is completely visible. And then if you've got shades of gray, there are different levels of visible. So we've got this map that if we drop it on the block, anything that's black will not show up. So if there's a little white, it's a mask. It's going to act like a filter. So only those little lashes are going to show from this block. So let's apply this transparent map. Let's select it first. Boom. See? So now we only see the eyelashes. Let's work around the rest of his body just for fun. Those are his arms. Then his legs. And then his fingernails. We could be funky and give him black fingernails. But let's not. Let's just reset that to none and add the texture file. There's hands. And the same goes for his legs, but we won't do that right now. So definitely some differences between the OBJ and the FBX, but let's look at what it looks like if we render this out a little bit. So let's open the offline render. And change a few settings first. Uh, let's change this to horizontal. Change from CPU to GPU. And put some nicer lighting. High contrast, that should work well. Let's zoom in a little bit. And sync. I brought both the avatars into Blender so that we could have a little look at the mesh. And now that we have, we can see why we're getting much better detail in the OBJ. The OBJ is on the left, and there's a whole lot more vertices and more uh, geometry than the FBX. Um, usually FBX, you're using it in animation and stuff, and it's got a rig and an armature, and you want it really low poly so it's easy to animate. And I mean, you'll get details from other ways, but for our purposes, especially in Style 3D, we just want to deal with the OBJ. Um, if we were in Clo, I usually have to make an OBJ and an FBX of every single pose and go back and forth and delete and reinsert, and it's a real pain in the butt. So it's one thing that I love about Style 3D is it's just so much easier to pose these avatars. So having determined that we much prefer the shape of the OBJ, and I'll show you how to pose them in the third video, the next video, we're going to talk about how to change one of the export settings from the default in DAZ so that we bring the textures in the, the same way the FBX came in with the textures already applied. And then we're going to talk about materials. This is really important to get a, a much nicer appearance of the avatar. So join me in the next video.